I cannot answer for what went wrong. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I am just going to uh, continue speaking until <laughs> I'm done. It's a one hour show. We going to do one hour. That's how this is going on. So anyway, as I was saying, the the thing about, so what Bill Gates did and what he does, he ends, he does not end up being depleted because he, well, he could have ended up being depleted. He could have because the word says that the harvest is, is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest. Well, I'm going to tell you one example of how he did example exactly that when he when he learned about what was going on <clears throat> with the toilet situation what he did was he went to he had already asked top universities to um he had already asked them to basically help him with this problem and the first response was ignore trick uh, 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 <coughs> excuse me chirp crickets Chirp crickets. Hey, Demetrius, thank you for joining as I continue this uh, message. I don't know why I got shut off, but I did. So anyway, um, the first thing he did was he asked for help. He asked for help. Having gotten no help, he, you know, he didn't stop. He didn't give up. He just went up. He just figured out another way to ask for help. He identified, thank you for coming back, Lynn. I appreciate you. He identified, um, someone who also understood the problem from the perspective that he understood it someone who had grown up in one of those communities someone who forgot this guy's name but he he said he was six years old the first time he remembers his dad telling him that one of his brothers had died he was nine years old when two more of his brothers died and about 11 when a, a third a fourth brother died all from diarrhea so what he did was he identified someone else who understood the issue. They began to brainstorm and he decided to put up about $7 million from the foundation to get some of the schools working on it. Now he, you know, pray to the Lord of the harvest because these are God's people. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send more help. So he did. That's what he did. He put up this, this challenge and now the universities are responding. Now engineers are responding. He went to another person, um, a very, uh, a very, another engineer who he knew who understood sanitation. And he asked him, he, he gave him the resources that he needed in order to develop a sanitation system for these countries and these developing nations that, um, would address the, the second part of the issue because the first part of the issue is no toilets. The second part of the issue is no infrastructure. If you had toilets, no infrastructure to get the waste from the toilet to where it need to be, you know, where to be disposed of properly. Um, the way that we just kind of take for granted here in the US, like it just wasn't going down like that. So he's doing this work. Not, I mean, he, you, everybody knows about his, his HIV AIDS work. Everyone knows about his hunger work, all of this, but this toilet thing is a big deal. Cause this is kind of, this is one of those things that people don't really want to mess with for obvious reasons. It's not, it's not pleasant. So, but it's critical. And it is, I believe the reason why this country is able to be the country that it is, is because we don't have any issues with sanitation and waste in that way we don't um so anyway the, the he, he sought out help he solicited for help he does not find himself in depletion because he number one he is committed to this thing that he's doing um he recognizes that he cannot do all of the parts himself he knows he can't do all everything so he solicits for help and when he finds when he identifies those who can help he brings them in. He compensates them well. Once they got a toilet design, they realized that $50,000 a toilet is untenable. That ain't gonna work. So the next thing that he did was he went to China and he identified, he, he did a big old, um, um, he did a great big um, presentation with manufacturers, manufacturers in China and basically said, if you could come up with a way to get these toilets made for $500 or less, I give you this business. 
and he found a partner who did exactly that. So he went and he got workers for the harvest and people are staying alive as a result of that. So that was the toilet thing. The next thing that he's, wor he's working on is polio. He's trying to eradicate polio. He's trying to get polio off the face of this earth because again, like here in the US, even if you are an anti-vaxxer, you have to recognize the, uh, the value in, I, I want to say those, the core, um, the very, like those very first few, uh, like the diphtheria, the tetanus, polio vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella, all the rest of that shit. I'm like, I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know why it's got to be so many. When, when I was having children and when I was a child, our little card was, was short, you know, our card was short. Now children are being pumped up with so many different vaccines that it's kind of hard to ignore people who are saying, don't fucking vaccinate my child. Y'all doing too much. Y'all doing too much. I felt like when the chicken pox um, vaccine was introduced, you know, cause I was, I think by then I was having children. I had, I had a child and I felt like, damn, we already got to get a tetanus shot every 10 years. Like, I don't know if I, I'd rather just let him get the chicken pox and be done with it. Just let him get the chicken pox in my mind. That's how I see it. And according, I think if I remember correctly, you, you know, don't quote me cause I'm not a medical professional, but if I remember correctly, if you develop chicken pox as a child, you, you are less likely to develop shingles as an adult, which is, you know, the chicken pox on steroids and really has, has killed some, um, immunocompromised people and elderly people, but that's another conversation for another day. So anyway, um, the way that someone like him who is driven, committed, totally like just like head down, getting his work done, the way to keep that person from experiencing depletion is, you know, he Bill Gates, I think is a great example of someone who's not, who doesn't experience depletion because he, like I said, he's got the resources, but he created that. He created that. He created that. He didn't go to the government and say, listen, now y'all, you know, shake you by the collar and y'all need to help me with this. That he, he put in the work. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. That's basically five work years, right? He was doing 10,000 hours every few months because he would not stop working. And like I said, hundreds of billions of dollars later, the evidence is there. You'll know them by their fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. And honestly, I mean, he's got, he, he built, I ain't doing too bad. Hundreds of billions of dollars. He still gets to work because he's got the foundation. He and his wife are running it together. He's got a su another super wealthy friend who has already committed, you know, a, a, another fortune. If I had $30 billion, just that, if I just had $30 billion, <laughs> and Warren Buffett is saying, listen, when I leave this earth, you're going to have another $30 billion for you, for you, for the work you're doing here. So he, so he's, he's got, he created that he's got those resources, but many of us don't have that. So how do we not experience depletion as we continue to carry out the work that we're here on this earth to do? Well, the, one of the first things that you do is again, you got to decide, are you committed to doing your work? Are you committed to doing it? Are you going to get up every Sunday, get your hair together, get your face together and get on this on your live and talk about whatever it is that you're supposed to be talking about, no matter how many numbers Facebook show you, or no matter how much they shut down your, your, um, your, uh, video feed. Are you going to do that? Whether you're traveling or not. Are you going to get up and do that? Are you committed? Are you going to get up like you do to go to your job every day? Because you committed to getting that paycheck. So if I can help you to understand it more clearly, you're committed to getting your paycheck. You show up, but at the very least, you show up enough for them to know you work there and you do enough work for them to say, okay, we're going to keep inviting you back and give you the money that we promised you, the money that we agreed to, right? So you commit to that. Are you committed enough to put on your clothes and go out and meet people, meet new people on a regular basis? Are you willing to do that in order to build your business? Are you willing to do that? Some people find it very easy to do. 
um, to go out and do networking and meet people when they have jobs, but they find it more challenging when they have, when they have started their own businesses and they out here, you know, running their businesses because at this point it's just you, you don't have a whole team backing you up like you do at your job, at your place of work. I learned that the hard way. Cause I swear I thought I was the only somebody doing work where I worked at before. It, I was the, I was doing everything until I had to do everything. Then I was like, well, damn, where is the help? <laughs> where is the help? Are you willing to, um, are you willing to, um, um, set aside enough resources? Are you willing to set aside enough resources? in order to um, hire help, if you gotta hire help, if you need some, are, are you willing to sit down and write it out and figure out what's the best use of your time? What's the most efficient way to get a thing done? How committed are you? Are you willing to make the sacrifices necessary? Bill Gates gave up a lot of time, a lot of time. Are you willing to give up that much time? Are you willing to make time during the course of a day to rest, to read, and to think? Are you willing to take a whole think week? Are you willing to take your body to a Vipassana retreat where you can sit, where you sit in silence for 10 days with your own thoughts to get your thoughts lined up? Are you willing to do those things? What are you willing to do in order to get done the work that you need to get done? If you would make a commitment to the things that you're willing to do will become very easy to identify what things you're not willing to do. And as long as you're not doing things that you're not willing to do, that you don't wanna do, you will not experience depletion. This is why it would be very easy for him to put in 10,000 hours every few months. It's very easy for him to put that in at, during that time because he was committed to getting this done. Hundreds of billions of dollars later, you know them by their fruit. Okay. Well, anyway, y'all, it is exactly one hour later. And like I said, we is going to do what we said we was going to do up in here. So I want you, um, I want y'all to think about, I want you to think about your level of commitment. I think that we're going to stay in this harvest vein for a minute. I kind of feel like this, we need to talk more in depth about this. I feel like there's way more that needs to be said about this particular thing. So last week we talked about the harvest. This week we're talking about getting help so that you don't become depleted. Next week we'll see where we go with it, where we where where the where the word takes us, where the spirit moves us. All right. Listen, y'all. Hey, I love you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Peace. <laughs>